And what you're talking about is giving your associate, your employee, your partner permission to tell you the truth. I've just learned that lately, permission. And it's how you phrase the question. Yep. I know if you go phrase the question to someone, how's it going? Oh, it's great. Because they don't want to be the bearer of bad news. If you say Ralph or Mary, why are we selling less gadgets today than we did last month or this month? Blah, blah, blah. And then you've given them permission to acknowledge we're not doing as well as we want to. And, yep. and I know the answer. And here's the answer. Because they do know the answer. And that's how you get corroboration. And that's how you get them. You've got to give them the framework. You've got to give them permission. You've got to frame it so they uh, don't have to be the bearer of bad news. Now, Mark, you know this. I'm going to talk to you people. Bad news does not get better with age. <laughs> but Mark, talk about this a little bit, because how many times people come to you and say, oh, don't tell me that, I don't want to hear it. You know, it's funny. In, when you talk to people in big organizations, one of the, you, you get this lesson small, but it still exists. I can tell when a CEO is in real trouble when I say, um, who gets the bad news first? You or your bosses? You or the board of directors? Some people have built so many structures around them that say, I don't want to hear the bad news. Only bring me good news. Well, when they do that, they've just taken out their early warning system. Because not only does bad news not get better with age, just because you don't know the bad news doesn't mean the bad news doesn't exist. And putting our heads in the sand, you know, it's funny. Well, here's There's, you cannot solve a problem in if you don't recognize the problem. Well, you know, the real kicker, there's only one treatment uh, known to work across all kinds of cancers, and that is early detection. There are some treatments work for some cancers, some treatments work for other. Early detection is the one thing that seems to work across all forms of cancer. And what that means is we have to get the tests. I was at the dentist a couple years ago, and the dentist said to me, you know, we have this new screening for uh, oral cancer. And all you got to do is swish with this mouthwash and, you know, we shine a light and see if you've got any, yeah. you know, early warning signs. And, and like a normal human, I had to stop and think about it for a second. Because I said, you know, it, granted, it's 25 bucks. They're going to tell me if, I, you know, maybe early warning signs of oral cancer. But I had to stop for a second because I said, do I really want to know this? <laughs> like, this is, yeah. you know, three days before Thanksgiving. Do I really oh, want to go yeah. into this? But that's the tendency yeah. we have to fight against because I had to talk myself out of this and go, hey, Mark, if you don't know, you, you could right. be dead. Let's translate that to this entrepreneur out there, right? Yep. You have got to get up every morning, go to bed every night, and think about all the things that could go wrong. You got to think about the, the negative. Mm -hmm. You got to think about the things that could go wrong so that you can think them through and see them when they happen. When I played 18 years of the National Football League, set all the records, played in three of the first 11 Super Bowls, I played the game in my mind the night before the game. Mm -hmm. I thought of everything that could go wrong. If I was in the red zone, I was third and one on the right hash mark at the 50 yard line, I thought about all these situations. And so when I got there the next day, I already played the game. Right. That's what you have to do in business. If you just want to gloss over everything and not look at the details, not look at all the things that are going on and what you could do better and what could go wrong and what if they just go does go wrong, how, how you go to that's where you've got to be. And when you do that, I'm not a negative person. No. I'm a positive person, but I'm a positive person because I get up every morning, go to bed every night with a little edge on looking at every detail of what is going wrong so that I can make sure that I don't have blinders on and I see the signs. Years ago, Michael Dell, when he was kind of first creating Dell Mike, Computers. Michael Dell, the founder of Dell Computer. Right. He would have, every week, he would ask his executives, tell me everything that went wrong this week. And so they'd send it to him on Friday afternoon. He'd read it over the weekend, and Monday morning they'd come in, they called it the hour of horror, and they would go through and they'd say, all right, what went wrong last week? And let's pick a couple of those things that we can jump on and fix immediately. 
let's go fix those things immediately. And it did two big things for them. Number one is it showed them where the problems were. And the only way you can get perfection is if you know where the problems are so you can go fix those things. The second thing it did though was it, it kept the fire burning. It forced them to never get complacent. They never said, oh, we're number one PC maker in the world, yeah. we're, everything's perfect, let's yeah. believe our yeah. own press, let's it, take our foot positive. off the edge. Exactly. It's a and it kept the edge because it said, listen, we may be the number one PC maker in the world, we still got problems. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking as you're talking, I want you to think as we're talking here because we talk about our teams. My team, the Georgia Bulldogs. I don't know when you're going to listen to this, but three weeks ago, <laughs> they played in Florida and were heavy, heavy favorites. And Florida ran the ball for 418 yards against us. Beat us, just beat us 41 to 20. And after the game, the coaches and the players said, well, we just weren't ready. We just didn't treat them with enough respect. That's what you're talking about. Exactly. You've got to not be cocky. You've got to be on the lookout. You say, well, that's negative. That's reality. And if I'm looking at reality, I can solve problems. But how many times, the, the, you're an entrepreneur. When, when your customers leave you, they don't tell you. They just disappear. Something went wrong and, and nobody was paying attention, right? One of the best things from a sales point of view that you can do, everybody wants to go and talk to their, their customers. Why did you buy from us? Okay, that's, that's good, you want to know that. But what you really need to know is the people that said no to you, the people that didn't buy your yeah, stuff. Yeah. One of the single best things an entrepreneur can do is to go back through all the people that said, I don't want to buy from you, and just go back and say, listen, it would be really helpful to me, just personally, if you could tell, I'm not trying to sell you, I'm not trying to pitch you, yeah. I just want to know, what could I have done better? What could we as a business have done better? I, I'd make it even stronger than that. I'd go back to the person who didn't buy, buy from me and say, you know, you've gone another way. I have no interest in trying to change your mind. Yeah. I want you to help me and just tell me what is it that you didn't like about my product or my delivery or me so that I can improve and maybe help me solve the problem for the next customer. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it's, you know, we get so caught up in talking to only the people that, that like us, that yeah. are already our yeah. fans. Yeah, that's a good point. Those aren't the people that are going to get you killed in business. The people that are going to get you killed are the people that didn't buy from you. And even when it comes to employees, you know, we, we go in, we ask our employees questions, how's it going, all of that. And then we say, you know, tell me one positive thing. Uh, the best managers we see yeah. go in and they ask yeah. their employees, listen, I want to know what makes you tick, what motivates you, but I also want to know what's burning you out right now. What's frustrating you? What's getting in your way? Because that, it's when you only, when you dig for that kind of information, that you actually find all of the nuggets in there. Well, I used to walk the aisles of Walmart with Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, the greatest entrepreneur that ever lived. And I learned from him. You know why I learned from him? I asked him questions. And we would go to his store openings, and he'd go to the people working in different aisles. He didn't tell them any of them what to do. He'd ask them, what products are selling? Why do you think people are buying them? Are our prices too high? Are our prices too low? What can I do to help your job? What can we do to make your job easier? That's what people don't want to be told what to do. The great leaders don't tell people what to do. They ask questions, they ask for your suggestions, they ask for your ideas, and when that goes on, guess what's going to happen? You're going to feel better about yourself, and you're going to have a, Mark, a positive attitude because of that. Positive attitudes don't have, oh, I want to be positive! That's, that's a mirage. You've got to be realistic, and you can be the happiest person in the world and when you really know that you are into every detail, right? It's, it's great work, great performance, all of that comes from being connected, being tied into the real work, you know? It's, we gotta, you know, make money, we gotta 
deal with the bankers. We got to do all of that, but ultimately, it's the nitty gritty of the customers who use our stuff, yeah. who are grappling with it every day. It's the employees. They're the ones that when you're trying to you know, sign somebody up for something or you know, ring them out at the checkout or whatever, they're the ones who are struggling. They're the ones who have the insight. Here's what our customers are experiencing and here's how we can do this better. If your focus is on the bankers or the stockholders or whatever it might be, however big or small you are, you're going to get beat. Your focus is singularly on not yourself, not the banker, not the stockholder, on the customer. If you have your, your, your focus on the customer and solving problems for that customer and making sure that customer is happy, then you have a really good chance of, of making something happen. It's got to be about something other than you. And in sports, we see it, don't we? Uh, absolutely. It's not about Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. It's about their teammates. They're there to make their teammates better. You're there to make your customers better and to make your associates that work with you or your business partners better. And when we work with that humility and with that, with that care, good things happen. Good to see you, buddy. Friend. Keep preaching.